Hello friends, welcome back for another video. I apologize for the setup for today, but life happens when you've got sick kids that won't nap, so this is the time I gotta get this video in. Um, Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. If you're new around here, my name is Sandy K. Thank you so much for joining. We are gonna be diving in all about sleep training today and we have had overflowing toilets and like i said sick kids i've been blowing noses all day or wiping noses let's dive right in this is the second kid that i've now sleep trained successfully and i mean sure we're only like three weeks in with her but so far it's going really well even with moving her into her brother's room on day four and then traveling and her getting sick, she still has been sleeping pretty good through the night. So if you have some other hiccups like that, hopefully this video can be helpful for you and give you hope that it really can still work for you. Although if your kid is sick, I would recommend not starting until they're better. First off, I'm gonna be talking about how we sleep train and we used taking care of babies each time. So for more details, you can go to her website and buy her course but I'll just dive into the basics of what we did so for this little one she was next to us in a bassinet in our room and so my husband and I actually slept on here our red couch right here has a pull-out bed so we slept on that and had her sleep up in the room by herself so we wouldn't disturb her while we're coming in for bed and waking up in the morning for work. So she slept in her bassinet by herself in that room with a sleep sack on and a binky on a little rope thing, you know, that clips to you. And that helps her actually grab onto the rope I found and find the pacifier when it falls out in the middle of the night if she needs help soothing herself back to sleep. All right, and for the middle of the night when they wake up, so say you put them to bed at seven, they wake up for the first time at eight, then you do a pop-in. Um, once they've cried for five minutes, you do a pop-in, unless they've kind of started to settle and soothe themselves and stop crying before that five mark, that five minute mark, then you start the time over and wait another five minutes. But you do a pop-in at five minutes, 10 minutes, and then 15 minutes and you pop in every 15 minutes until they fall asleep. And every time they have a new wake up, then that, those pop-ins start over. And I forgot to add, my daughter is six months old. We spoke with her pediatrician and she was good to go for night weaning as well. And it's recommended with a taking care of babies course that you <laughs> night wean the same time you sleep train. So we did that and by day five, she was sleep trained. In her course, it talks about not feeding a baby while they're crying, so you're not associating um, crying with feeding. So you actually want to get them out of bed while they're sleeping and feed them. And so what you do is plan for just two times, 10.30 and 3.30, I think it was. You feed at those two times middle of the night, unless they wake up, then you wait till they fall back asleep, and then you would feed them. Basically, the first night at 10.30 and 3.30, you feed them for five minutes, and then the second night at those two times, you're feeding them for three minutes, and then for two minutes, and then you're only feeding them for two minutes at 10.30, and then the fifth night, not at all. So this method of weaning my daughter, night weaning, actually worked super well with her and also with my son. Since she doesn't nurse very long, I did the method of just slowly trickling down, only starting at five minutes, because that's around how, much, how long she nurses anyway. With my son, I can't remember, I think I did it different. So you'll have to fill it out, do whatever feels best for you. You could also go cold turkey, or you could even sleep train, start a sleep train and keep a night feeding. But I found doing it as the course has stated, where you're not feeding them when they're crying and only getting them while they're sleeping to feed them has helped a bunch. Now on to how it actually went for us, what it looked like in the middle of sleep training. To be honest, it was really not that bad. I was so surprised because with her personality, I just thought it was going to be so much harder than with my son. And honestly, I felt like it was easier. So yay. Don't have hope. Don't be too scared. <laughs> so the first night she was awake about 30 minutes and of that time probably cried 15 minutes or less because it's not, at least for her, both my kids, it's not a constant cry. It's a cry 
put your head down, try and self-soothe, maybe cry a little more so it doesn't feel so torturous. And then you also can look forward to your pop-ins knowing if you be consistent, you're helping not confuse them. Because the worst thing you can do is confuse your baby by not being consistent. And then they'll think, oh, is my mom going to come in and nurse me right away? Or is she going to make me cry it out for 10 minutes? So just be consistent. I think that's the best thing you can do is just stick with the time intervals for the pop-in. So that first night of sleep training, my daughter only woke up three times. The first time at 8.30, she fussed for a minute or two and then fell back to sleep. She woke up at 9.33 and at the five minute mark, she was starting to self-soothe. So I pushed the first pop-in back to another five minutes and then I went in quickly, just say, mommy's here, pat her bum. On the first two nights, you can do simple touch, and then the nights after that, you just use your words. But just popped in and said, you're okay, mommy loves you, I'm here for you baby, go back to sleep. And then I had to do one more pop in at that point, 10 minutes later, and then she fell back to sleep by 10, 10 p.m. And then her last wake up was at 1.35 a.m. She woke up and put herself back to sleep. And then at 7 a.m. she was awake, cooing, and happy. And I've got to go get the dinner out of the oven. The second night, I didn't even have to pop in. She was able to soothe herself. She cried for maybe five minutes or less. She only woke up twice. Once at 9.20, she fussed for about three minutes, then put herself back to sleep. And then at 3 a.m., she was kind of just grunting, not even crying. And within five minutes, put herself back to sleep again and then woke up at 6.50 for the day. Third night, there was only three minutes of crying and two wake-ups. She woke up at 9.10, fussed for only a minute, and then put herself back to sleep. And then around 3 a.m., I had to do a quick pop-in. I think she could sense that I was in the room, and so she just was kind of being more fussy and awake. And so I did do a quick pop-in and actually left and fell asleep out in the hallway on the floor while I was waiting for her to fall asleep so I could do her night feeding for like three minutes because it fell in that time frame of doing it at 3.30. She woke up for the day at 6.50 again. Sorry if the lighting just got worse, but anyway, on night three, we decided to move her over to my son's room and she woke up four times. At 12.58, she fussed for about four minutes, and she was pretty mad because she rolled over to her back. At 1.52 a.m., she woke up for a minute and then fell back to sleep. At 3.35 a.m., she was again mad. She was on her back. She fussed for about 30 seconds and then fell back to sleep. At 4 a.m., she cried again, not wanting to be on her back. And so after a few minutes of crying, I was worried she was going to wake up her brother. So I did go in and popped back in her binky and rolled her on her belly and then she slept through the rest of the night. Night five was very similar to night four. She fussed a little bit less and she started to get used to sleeping on her back. Finally on night six at this point she just transitioned to sleeping in her brother's room on night four and this whole new thing of sleep training. But by night six, she finally slept through the night, yay! And then at 5.30 a.m., we woke her up, fed her, and took her to Utah. <laughs> and while we were traveling, I was super surprised. She did super great with sleeping through the night still. She might have woken up once or twice some nights, but she would put herself back to sleep. I didn't really have to do a pop-in except for maybe once when this week she's been sick, um, then I would have to go in and settle her down maybe once, give her her binky and put her back on her belly. But other than that, and maybe feed her a little bit earlier than normal, um, just like at 5 a.m. And then she would go back down for another two hours or so. With traveling, what works best for us is having her in her own space. So we had her in the blackout tent or the slumber pod. And we like to put her in her own room too. We did the same thing like the whole first year with my son of sleeping. I tried to always have him in his own space. And now that my son is two and pretty great at sleeping, we'll have him in our room with us and then he does fine.
Well, that is everything for sleep training, how we did it, how it went for us. I hope this was helpful, and I hope the rocking back and forth wasn't too distracting, and the coughing and whatever else in the background, <laughs> the lighting, everything. Thank you so much if you've watched to this point. I really appreciate you, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your night. Bye. See you in the next video.